Hey guys, Tony here. It's been a while. I'm gonna play some uh, Lee Chess Classical or Rapid. Let's hit this guy. Elosco 2083 with a high and good luck. We're gonna play the Alakine's Defense. We're gonna mix it up. Go for the win. Please don't play this. One time. Yes. Okay, so we're probably gonna get the four pawns attack or the exchange variation. This guy's trying to rip my face off. What's this? What's it? What are we looking? I don't know if this is like a proper chess stereotype, but I noticed that Spanish speaking players tend to be fairly aggressive. This move is known to be an error. And as such, I'm going to hit it with a red highlight. Because it allows, allows, uh, Bishop g4. And now the problem is, I believe the threat is Bishop takes f3, Queen takes f3, Knight takes d4 when I'm threatening knight knight to c2, so he can't really take on b7, and if he plays bishop takes d4, queen takes d4, queen takes b7, I'm guessing at least I can take on e5 check and then just move the rook or something, or actually bishop b4 check might be quite good, and then castles. This move hangs this thing, maybe? No. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Now, why is this move not good? I could play bishop b4. Another idea in this position is to go bishop takes f3, and instead of queen takes f3, which runs into problems here, if g takes f3, there's queen h4 check. And if he doesn't want to move his king, he has to go bishop e f2, and then I can play queen takes d4. But this specific move order, he can take with a knight. And if... If knight takes d4, I just think bishop takes d4, and there's nothing really there. Bishop b4 is the only other move that really <clears throat> calls out to me here. And then I think, again, I would be threatening bishop f3. Yes. And if a3, I take... Yeah, the problem is if I take, you can just take with the queen. I guess I can take there. Mess up his stuff a little bit. I don't know if that's, like, super convincing, though. Ah, if he goes a3, I can take here first, right? So if bishop b4, a3, bishop takes f3. If he takes with the queen, then bishop takes d2. Bishop takes d2, and then even just queen takes d2, I think, is winning. And if he takes with the g pawn, I can flick in this check. And if bishop f2, then I can take here check. Queen takes, and then... Okay, so that this is the one. This is the... This is where the money's at. Uh, I do want to apologize. I have been... Um, both immensely busy and not living in my own apartment for the last couple weeks. My parents went on vacation in Florida, and they have a very old and senile dog that um, just by sort of coincidence, they don't really have a babysitter. I say babysitter. They don't have a dog sitter, and he's just, like, really old and nervous and frail, and, like, they don't want to put him in a kennel. And he doesn't do well with other dogs, and, you know, he doesn't, like, I can't bring him over my apartment because they don't allow dogs, and also he would just probably lose his mind. So I stayed at their place, and I just, like, I didn't move my computer. I didn't bring any recording stuff. So I was over there for a couple weeks, and then, um, I know a couple weeks is insane, just, like, not living in your place, by the way. But, um, and then I, uh, my parents went to Florida. They have a house there. My dad works remotely while he's there, and then I went down there for... Uh, a couple days and visited them. So I've been out of town for quite a while. So if there are like comments on my videos that I haven't gotten to, or, you know, obviously there's been a lack of videos, um, just the Lee Chess 45 plus 45 league. And we're in like week six right now, and I've only posted two. Uh, so I'm getting to those. I promise I'm getting back in the swing of things. Um, all that. So that's, that's where we're at. But I just wanted to apologize for it because I know it's been kind of a lack of content but uh also just playing in the lee chess 45 plus 45 league by the way which i highly recommend it's a sweet league it's really well run everyone's super nice there's a good community there 
and playing on a team is just great. Like there's a, there's a lot of camaraderie to it, and you know, cheering on your teammates and analyzing their games, and so I would recommend that. But that that also just takes up a lot of my time. So between playing the games, which could be like two to three hours analyzing um and then recording it just takes a long time so but i I promise i'm getting around to it i have a lot of the games annotated already i just have to record my annotations okay so let's just very quickly double check that bishop takes f3 is good i don't think i really have to but queen takes yeah all right i'm just gonna do this this seems pretty convincing And this is the problem with playing the four pawns attack if you don't really know the theory is you know you're making a lot of pawn moves falling behind in development you weaken your king you got to hold that center center up sturdy and yeah if, if you don't know what you're doing you can get into a lot of trouble uh-huh did i calculate this wrong i think i did <laughs> Oh, damn. Okay, what am I doing here? I mean, one idea is just to go bishop e7 now. I think when I calculated this originally, I thought queen h4 check, bishop f2, bishop takes d2, queen takes d2, and then queen takes d4 for some reason, forgetting that the bishop on f2 still guards the pawn. So that's cool. Um, are there any other tactics? Doesn't look like it. I mean, bishop e7, threatening bishop h4 check also looks pretty good. I can just do that. But this is kind of like the moment where if I have something more dynamic, I definitely want to find it, and I definitely want to play it. So it's kind of a critical moment here. I mean, bishop e7 just looks pretty good. d4 is still hanging, and, and this is a threat. Let me, I'm just going to play this. I'm not going to waste too much time. don't think he has d5 i mean he almost has to play something like i guess he has knight e4 here doesn't he jeez i'm playing bad knight e4 looks pretty reasonable doesn't it i thought he had to go knight b3 which is just a totally crap square yeah well, this is irritating. <sighs> Tony, Tony, Tony. You're kind of an idiot. There's bishop h4 check, but I, I, I'm i guessing he would just go knight g3. He could also go knight f2, or probably bishop f2 sucks. Should not do that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little sick. I don't know if I already apologized already. One idea is just for me to go queen d7 here. Castle's long. So on and so forth. Perhaps I can go f6 and start trying to chip away, or f5. That looks dumb. Another idea that I, I doubt is very good is to go a5, a4, and try and do silly stuff on this square. That seems really slow. Ugh, I'm really irritated here. I feel like I missed something already. I, I don't think White's position should be as good as he's got. I'm not saying it's good. It just feels like I, I effed up somewhere. <clears throat> so 
So what do I do? Queen d7 looks to me to be the most obvious and the least risky. Probably going to play that. I'm just kind of checking to see if there's anything more interesting. I don't know. I don't have even the slightest clue. Feels to me like I'm I, I'm virtually forced to go F6 at some point. Or F5. Uh, I don't know. Queen d7, queen d2, castles, castles, I would assume, or castles, rook d1, probably castles long. <laughs> F5. Problem is, I think you can just go like knight f2 or knight g3. I don't think that really does anything. One idea is bishop h4 check, knight g3, and then f6. That way, if he takes, then I could take back with the bishop, and he's not, he can't take. It's kind of an idea. Problem is, I guess, anytime I go f6, he can go f4 pretty much. I'm just gonna go queen d7. I, I can't spend too much more time thinking about thinking about this. Ugh, I'm getting some like weird connecting, reconnecting stuff, so I'm losing extra time. It's kind of annoying. How did I how did I deplete down to half half my time by move 12 in an opening I've studied a lot? There has to be something here, man. I don't believe it. I don't believe in this. I don't know. Maybe I'm just I'm just uh not evaluating this properly. In my head if if white plays this this knight f3 on move 7 and allows bishop g4, he should get punished pretty severely, but maybe I'll have to update uh my thoughts on this. I mean, his position's still not great. Let's be honest, but Black has to do something about this massive space disadvantage. I was considering, uh, now that I just have a pretty sizable amount of analysis on Alakine's defense just for myself, I was considering releasing a lot of that on Chessable as a repertoire. Let me know if you guys are interested in that kind of thing. I know Alakine's defense is not the most popular opening in the world, but um, I was thinking about, let's say, donating some portion of my my profits from Chessable to Lee Chess. If you're into that type of thing, comment or, you know, like my video or send me a message on Lee Chess or whatever. I don't think it'd be a huge amount of work to uh, to get all that going. Interesting. Rook G1. First thought is bishop h4. And so now if he goes knight g3, he blocks the rook and I don't have to do anything about it. I really don't want to play something like this. This looks completely terrible. I can castles and allow rook g7 and then play bishop uh, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, queen takes d4, queen takes d4, rook takes d4, rook f7. Mm. I'm not sure how I feel about that. You go knight f2. So if I go here, he goes knight f2. 
Maybe I can go f6 in that case. Takes, takes. Or takes with the bishop, probably. I'm going to play this. I don't know if it's any good. But I'm going to flick this in before I decide on whether or not I'm going castles long or f6. If he goes knight g3, I'll probably castle. If he goes knight f2, I'll probably go f6. f4, though. Maybe then just castles along. At least my g7 pawn's protected then. Interesting position. Black has to be... Oh, what? Does it not? Ha I mean, besides the fact that it's just like out of three or four options, it's got to be the, the worst option. Really? I can't take this thing? For what reason? That is quite, quite, quite the choice. I will take that. I'll allow rook takes g7 if he wants to play rook takes g7. I'm cool with that. Weird. Weird position. Rook g7. Knight f6 is not yet terminal. Rook g7, knight e3, king takes e3, castles long. That's just silly. It's kind of a battle for who has the suckier dark squares. Hard to say who's winning or losing. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I can also just castle long. Now? Leave the knight on c4. That might be better. I have no idea. Man. This is... quite the position. If only I had 9 minutes and 39 seconds instead of 5 minutes and 15 seconds. Um, I'm just going to get the hell out of dodge here. I like this knight enough to not necessarily take right away. If he plays something like bishop g1, I'm totally fine with that. I think. Eh, maybe I should have taken that. I didn't want to fix his king, though. I mean, his king is so stupid on this square. It makes his bishop really dumb. I mean, this does further expose March's king up the board, I guess. And and weaken d4, though. I mean, if he goes bishop g1, I gotta figure out... Oh, I, I'll just take this thing. I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. This is a triple attack, Tony. Knight c5, queen d5, I guess. He can take here if he wants. Think about this move. So knight e3, knight d7, knight d1. I feel like it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to, to start lopping off a bunch of pieces when his king is on e2. I should probably just go queen d5 without thinking about it much. I guess I can also play just queen e7. Seven, huh? 
Okay, so queen d5, rook f7, knight e3, king takes e3, knight d4. It just looks horrendous. Ooh. Let's go for it. In the words of the immortal entertainer Celine Dion, let's go for it. Hooey, how about that election, folks? No comment. How about those Indians? No comment. <laughs> That's sad. I just switched out my computer from uh, Windows 10, which I think sucks super bad, to Linux Mint. Really like it. Working on a new uh, opening explorer database for Lee Chess, trying to compile all of the newest hotness in database technology, games, etc. Make something that's bigger and better, more complete, more accurate, etc. It's super fun. No, it's really not though, it's just scouring the internet for games. Dragging that PGN onto your, your reference PGN over and over and over again. Checking for doubles, checking the spelling. People spell like Yusupov and Korchnoi like 400 different ways. It's really annoying. I'm being a real curmudgeon in this game. I apologize for that. I'm actually in, in you know, a reasonably good mood. Okay, that's a move. I didn't see that at all. Knight a5 is an option. Just b6 looks pretty obvious though. Does it not? I'm just gonna go b6. It is a little weakening, but it's it's the, the most forcing. I can go either knight to a5, but I want this knight to be able to take on e3 next move, and I want this knight to be able to uh, attack the weak d4 square, so I don't really want to go put either of these knights on a5, and b6, I will take this thing. Now he's got all kinds of stuff hanging. This guy's really aggressive. Takes here just seems like it must be good now. Probably do this. I think I can pretty much do this without even thinking. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, I'm, I'm hitting his queen. I, I don't, I don't know if he saw that. This is one of those weird discovered attacks where you move the knight and it defends the discovered piece. Un unfortunately for him, I think he's just dead lost now. <laughs> Man, not much of a game. Kind of unfortunate. I guess he could. I mean, he's sort of forced to take here. Take okay. Well, he wants to. He wants to throw away the lady. Yeah, I mean that that tactic is is weird. I mean, a lot of people, myself included, have fallen for similar knight discoveries that allow the retreat um, back to the the piece behind it. It's not. It's somehow just geometrically not obvious. I don't know what it is. I don't know if for my opponent it's. It's kind of like a, a retreating move, and so maybe it, it looks weird from from this angle. He just didn't see it. I don't know. But now he can resign. The old plus nine. Some exciting news, I'm getting a dog on Friday. That's pretty excellent. His name's Morty. I haven't decided on a middle name. If you have a middle name suggestion for a Mortimer blank Rotella or Morty Rotella, then, you know, hit me up. Tentative, tentative middle name might be Ray. Hard to say. He's a golden doodle. He's awesome. Okay, so he resigns. I thought I was going to have to pause the video and uh, just wait for this guy's clock to run down. I thought he was going to be one of those people, but he didn't do that. So that's good. 
So let's grab this thing, and it's been a while. Let's go into here, let's go into here. And there we go. So let's take a look at this one real quick. This is... The, th this move is the main line of the four pawns attack to take immediately. Let, let me confirm that. Yeah, by, by a long shot. Usually bishop f5 will transpose, so the, even the second move is, is um, similar. Uh, but there, there are other moves, like some people who like to play really unsound crap will, will play this move. No, I'm just kidding. Well... I don't think I'm kidding. I think this move is probably crap, but some people play it. I mean, it's not illogical in some ways. And there, there's g6 immediately. Um, and after knight c3, bishop g7, bishop e3. Uh, for a while, people thought this bishop e6 idea was, was um, quite good. The idea is to provoke d5 by by attacking the c4 pawn. Problem is I think, and, and once you provoke d5, you can go like, let's say bishop f5 or bishop c8, whatever, and now e5 is loose. And you know, if he goes knight f3, then you can move the bishop again. And of course, if, if white takes and then black takes back, he, he, black is totally fine. And white gives up the center, opens up this bishop, but um, I think, this is called the Sergei variation, this bishop e6 idea. Uh, but I think that I thought after b3, castles, rook c1, that white was just better. Um, I'd have to look into that, but I think I think this pretty much holds down the fort. Protect c4, clears off everything along the long diagonal, kind of like the Voronezh variation against the... Uh, the uh, exchange variation so takes takes and there are again uh, there's kind of a split here knight c6 would lead to the main line like i played um, my opponent played knight f3 but the main line is bishop e3 protecting the d pawn without allowing you know but knight f3 bishop g4 then black clears out this bishop anyway to f5 just to go e6 and then after knight c3 e6 Knight f3, it's also possible to go bishop e2. Um, black has a bunch of moves. I've tried basically all of them. I'm not sure any of them achieve full equality except for bishop e7. I've always gone bishop e7 in, in games that I care about. And then there are two, two significant moves here. Bishop e2 is kind of like the positional normal try. And then after castles, castles, f6, e takes f6, bishop takes f6. Queen d2, queen to e7, uh, rook a to d1, rook a to d8. Getting there, rook a to d8. Sorry, Lee Chess is like screwing up on me. Queen c7, or queen c1. This is kind of like a critical position for this bishop e2 move in the four pawns attack. And most people, it, given this position, make like a bunch of just random waiting moves. Like, Rook d7, rook f to e8, I don't get that move at all. You can see that was played once or twice. A lot of times black will just go h6 to both give this bishop a retreat square and to also take away this g5 square from white and just wait. Just wait a second. And, you know, sometimes they'll go king h8 and just get the king off the diagonal. Whatever. Not a huge fan of doing that because I think with white's extra space in the center and solid structure, eventually white will be able to sort of maneuver his pieces and make more improvements than black given his extra space and i think eventually white will find some way to break through i don't know a3 b4 b5 c5 d5 whatever i mean i i, I th after a lot of research i think the only move that equalizes for black here is e5 i'm not going to go any further it's a pawn sacrifice so after d5 black should go knight d4 and the point is, after either recapture, let's say, I don't know, knight takes d4 is the top move. 
Bishop takes d4, black can go bishop g5. And the only move for white to get uh, to meet this threat because of these bishops is queen a1. <laughs> and and uh, I think black has pretty reasonable compensation here. Uh, white's king is a little bit loose. The queen on a1 is obviously bad. These bishops are pretty strong. So, um, yeah, that, that's an interesting try. I think it's probably the best try for black. And there's also the tactical main line. So instead of bishop e2 that we just looked at, there's d5 immediately. Just really going for all-out refutation here. And after e, d, c, d, knight b4, threatening knight c2 check, winning an exchange. Also threatening to just uh, snap on d5. White sort of forced to go knight d4, hitting the bishop and also meeting the threat of knight c2. And then because bishop g6 would be met by bishop b5 check, which would be kind of a blowout, c6 is impossible, so I think black has to go king f8, which would be terrible. Let's mark that a question mark. Uh, after knight d4, then black has to go bishop d7 to, to stop this. And then there's e6, and yeah, I mean, this is when when stuff gets real, as they say. All of these moves are basically forced. Queen g4, preparing castles long. Let's do, you know, all this kind of stuff, and then black throws in this check. g3 takes, I think, castles long. Queen f6, and uh, takes, <clears throat> and then, uh, let's see, yeah, castles. This stuff is all kind of forced, and now white has traditionally tried four moves here. Bishop b5 check, bishop e2, bishop g5. What's the last one? Uh, I think I have bishop h3 in my notes also, just hitting the hitting the bishop uh, from a different square. Uh, the only thing I would note, the, the main problem black faces here is that there's like threats of going uh, bishop g5, and when the queen goes somewhere, you go e7, and when the rook goes to this square, you go bishop b5, and, and both hit the rook on e8. Or threaten to queen with e8 equals queen and win an exchange, and you're also hitting this bishop. So, my notes for for this sort of tactical variation kind of start at this position. So I analyze all of these things, these these lines in depth. One funny thing is that after bishop g5, black is sort of forced to go queen takes f1, rook takes, rook takes, and then there's like a huge mess. Kind of cool. Okay, so that's sort of the four pawns attack. Uh, main line in a nutshell my opponent played knight f3 which allows bishop g4 bishop e3 sort of forced and then e6 and yeah like usually i think after knight c3 there's just takes here and on g takes there's check bishop f2 queen f4 and the queen is just extremely good here bishop g3 of course hangs a d4 pawn uh, and black is threatening to just castle and, and mount down on this this d4 pawn, or castling long would, would also expose black to the threat of, white to the threat, rather, of knight takes e5, using the pin along the d-file. I think this position traditionally is supposed to be better for black. Not, not totally surprising. But my opponent played knight b to d2. Let's see. No games in the explorer, so we're kind of... So knight b to d2 is actually... I mean, at least according to this database, it's a novelty. Where the hell did the novelty thing go? Is that gone? What? Bring back the novelty, man. What happened? With the idea of, he changed it? Tebow. I'm coming for you, man. I'm coming for you in the slack after this game. <laughs> I mean, there's a space right here. Put novelty right there. Killing me, dude. No, it's okay. Rarely do people use novelty in, in Lee chess studies, except for me. Okay, but bishop b4 seems like almost the only move. 
I mean, not the only move, but it seems like the most logical way to gain counterplay. Threatening here. And if a3, of course, I still, I still have this in-between move. Threatening there. And he... Yeah, he can't take here, I don't think, because it just takes, takes, and then... I mean, almost anything just takes here, I think, is, is pretty simple. There's also, you know, whatever. Queen h4 check first. That's fine. He sort of has to play here, and then bishop e7, knight e4. All this seems forced. f5 right away. Okay, I didn't... I looked at this move, but I didn't understand it. I didn't under... I mean, I looked at it because it's forcing, and I figured, ah, if... if if he takes, maybe bishop takes, but what happens if he just goes... What happens if he just goes knight f2? Oh, I have f4. Yeah, okay. I saw it <laughs> I saw it once I played knight f2 on the board. Okay, that is... That does seem significant. How is this position for me? I guess if d5, I can castle long. Yeah, I mean this seems good. I, I I could see I could see playing this position. Is Queen D seven bad? Ooh. Okay, maybe not that bad. Yeah, I thought he, he pretty much should go Queen D two. I don't understand why Queen D three is better. And I, I I thought this line was probably what I was gonna play. Takes I guess in this position I can contemplate G takes. Might be better than go F5. <laughs> this is a mess. <laughs> I think I think white should almost be happy here though. Like I, I feel I feel a little bit like black's opportunities have already passed. Yeah, no games. It's weird to me that there's just nothing, nothing more radical here. Yeah, all right. I mean, this move is just crazy. I kind of assumed that I would just play here and then castles long. And I guess he, he'd be kind of in trouble there, too. What about knight f2? I thought f6. I mean, uh, yeah, all of this seems pretty bad. But king e2 is just, I think, pretty much suicidal. I, I don't get it. I How, how you can... You can think that that's like your best option is is beyond me. Both both walking your king into the center and hanging the c4 pawn at the same time is just sort of baffling. It is tempting to to take here first though. Something like this. I started to worry a little bit about bishop g1 here. Ooh, I didn't see knight e5. How does that work? I saw knight e I looked at knight e5, but I didn't think it worked. How does this... How does this make sense? Ooh, is it queen b5? That would be savage. Oh, man, that's gross. Yeah, that would have been, uh... That's, uh... That's spicy. That is a move I did not see. But that is sick. He's probably going to die a horrible death here. Especially because his bishop on h4 is actually extremely relevant and cutting off a bunch of his escape squares. Wow, that's sick. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I did think about this, but I mean, I, I don't understand principally, you know, why I want to start lopping off a bunch of stuff when his king's in the center. Oh, I guess I'm up a piece. That's a pretty good reason, isn't it? Oh. So he's pretty much forced to play here, but then his position really sucks. Okay, I'm just bad. I, I should have... 
<coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I should have definitely played that. Now I, now I feel a little bit bad. I miscalculated. I didn't think I was up a piece. I thought it was even. I thought it was equal material at the end of that line. Ugh. Okay, I mean, it doesn't really matter. That the, This is probably a little bit technically more simple to just take on E3. <coughs> Excuse me. God, I probably just blew out your eardrums. I'm sorry. This is what happens. I, I swear to God, I did not sneeze one time before I hit the record button. <laughs> and now... Now I'm losing it. Whoops. It's all falling apart, folks. Right at the end of the video. Okay. And he, he played Queen B3, which loses like everything. <coughs> oh, no. It's happening. It's happening. Okay. Oh, Knight D4. Discovered protection. Dang. Yeah, technically I didn't play great this game, but it didn't really end up matter mattering. <coughs> oh, no. Man, my dad was sick in Florida with the same cold, and now I'm, I'm, you're you're honestly witnessing me getting it on on stream here. This is this is not good. <laughs> oh God. Okay. But that's pretty much it. I mean, it, but, uh, you can you can see the eval, you can see the position. White's already White's already losing, and then the queen hang at the end is just you know the tragedy comedy for for a uh, value here. Okay, man. Whew. All right. Before I sneeze more, I'm going to get off. Comment on whether or not you'd like a chessable Alakine repertoire. I can probably put that together. Get that get that up and going. And comment what you think about the World Championship, man. It, these last two games, games three and game four, have been like unbelievable battles. Carlson is just pressing super hard. It doesn't seem like he's in his best form. But, but I, I even wrestle with that. I mean, some people like Tamor Rajabov on Twitter say, you know, Carlson's clearly not in his best form, whatever. But, you know, it, it's really hard to say because I don't think Carlson has, has been challenged by someone who's as good under pressure, who has as good of nerves, and ha who's as good of a defender as Karyakin. And Karyakin's just as young and just as sort of energetic, doesn't get tired like Anand, doesn't have the nerves. I mean, you could see Anand's nerves were terrible in those matches. And Karyakin's just holding like a boss in all of these positions. So it's hard for me to say whether or not uh, Carlson's in bad form or not, or if Kar Karyakin is just a world-class opposition. Um, let me know what you think. I will, of course, be back with more videos. Bye, guys.